comment or um I don't know. I haven't had people struggling with commenting before. So, um, but I will read the question aloud um, once I see it in case you guys can't see each other's chats, which I guess you must if um, you uh, are able to respond. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, yeah, th th no way I'm... Um, delaying the test. Nice try. Um, okay, so the warm up today was um, okay. Now the questions come in. Now that I start talking, so the warm up today was if you have any questions about um, you know things that are on the test, um, and I guess that was all for honors because GT. I know for my classes, you guys were in uh, the library, but. Um, so I'm just writing down questions. <sighs> so and nobody really had any questions, um, but um, okay. So what do white blood cells do? Um, white blood cells. Just so, Aiden, did you look at the the notes? Because white blood cells. Um, kill germs. They're the disease fighters of the, of your body. So if you go to the doctor and you have a really high white blood cell count, that means that, um, uh, you have some sort of an illness. Um, so that's the way that, um, doctors will uh, see if you're, how sick you are, depending on your white blood cell count. So white blood cells are the disease fighters. Um, all right. Does plasma only carry carbon dioxide or does it also carry oxygen? Um, there might be some oxygen free floating in the plasma, uh, but for the most part, oxygen uh, is transported by red blood cells and it's attached to the red, red blood cells by hemoglobin. Remember hemoglobin is like the glue that lets the uh, oxygen attach. And um, that's actually, it's actually the hemoglobin that gives red blood cells, their, their shape, and blood in general, it's a brighter red color. So once the oxygen is delivered, the hemoglobin drops off, and then um, that's why the blood doesn't look as, as red. Um, what's the difference between B negative and B positive blood or something for other blood types? So uh, B negative and B positive is the, um, the RH factor. So the RH factor is, uh, um, that protein that sits on the, uh, red blood cells, either you have it or you don't. So, uh, B negative doesn't have the protein and B positive does. Um, so that's the difference. They both have, uh, A, B antigens and A antibodies. So don't forget when we're talking about blood types, um, um, if you have a blood, you have a antigens, which are the markers on the red blood cell and you have B antibodies, which means you have antibodies that'll fight off, uh, B blood. So antibodies are things that, that fight things off. So, um, a blood has a antigens and B antibodies. B blood has B antigens and A antibodies. Of course, it has to be close, so it can be confusing. Um, AB blood has A and B antigens and no antibodies because it doesn't fight anything off. And O has no antigens and A and B antibodies. So if you were really confused, you're even more confused now. So look at that uh, foldable and that ought to help. Are we going to have to label? Uh, whoops like the parts of everything, like where the trachea is. No, uh, it's multiple choice. Now you may have to look at a diagram and it may say what structure um, is the trachea. And then there might be a diagram of the respiratory system and you'll have to be able to identify, but you're not gonna have to label it because it's a multiple choice test. Uh, are nerves and neurons the same thing? Would they have the same function or are they slightly varied? So 
neurons make nerves. Okay, so neurons are nerve cells, and your nerves are made of nerve cells. Um, but your brain is also made of neurons, and your spinal cord is made of neurons. So that's why I said when we talked about the three parts of the nervous system, um, you can't say brain, spinal cord, and neurons, because neurons are in the brain and the spinal cord. You have to say brain, spinal cord, and nerves. So um, it's like saying uh, skin cells make skin, right? So are skin cells and skin the same thing? Yes, but skin is an organ because it's a bunch of cells all together that make tissue and then tissue makes an organ. Um, so one is bigger than the other. So you just can't, just make sure that you know that the three parts of the nervous system is the brain, spinal cord, and nerves, not neurons. How does the diaphragm move in a way to support breathing? So the diaphragm is a muscle that goes across the middle of your chest under your lungs. And remember that um, balloon model. I really like that model because I feel like it uh, does a good job of uh, representing visually what it looks like. So when the diaphragm contracts, and this, this part's confusing, I feel like, because when I for a long time I thought that contracting meant it went up. So remember, muscles can only contract and release. They don't extend. If they do, you're injured. Okay, so muscles can only contract and um, relax, all right? And we're going to the muscular system next. Um, so when the diaphragm contracts, it for a long time, I thought that meant it went, went up, okay? But that's actually when it's relaxing. So when it contracts, it goes down, which increases the size of your chest cavity, which is a, which allows your lungs to inflate. So if you remember, when I pulled on the um, balloon in the lung model, it uh, the, the lungs expanded, and that pulling was contracting. Okay. And then when I let go and kind of pushed up a little bit, that was really, yeah, that was relaxing. See? Um, and that forced the uh, lungs to close because, or to deflate because of pressure. So um, it's not like uh, the size of your chest cavity increases, which allows the lungs to inflate it's almost like it forces the lungs to inflate because it's giving it more um, room. So it, it increases the pressure, the lungs squish, decreases the pressure, the lung natu lungs naturally inflate. Okay, what does the protein for blood do? Um, I don't know that it does anything uh, other than make it difficult for uh, blood to be donated. <laughs> what? Okay. Okay. Let's see. It talks about every, cause every place I've gone, um, it talks about that if you have that protein, it has to do with donating blood or receiving blood. But it doesn't say anything about it um, It improving your um, the quality of your blood. So if you don't have, <clears throat> uh, I'm just looking at this genetics thing. If you don't have the protein, it's not bad. Um, but it makes it harder to receive blood. That's it. Um, cause I don't see anything. I'm looking on Mayo Clinic. I don't see anything about, um, if your blood lacks the protein, you're RH negative. RH positive is the most common blood type. Having an RH negative blood type is not an illness and usually does not affect your health. However, it can affect your pregnancy. Your pregnancy needs special care. So we've talked about that. Uh, a baby can inherit the RH factor from either parent. Uh, so it doesn't say anything about it being better or worse, uh, only when it comes to um, transfusions. Okay. 
Um, how many questions are on the test? That's not a, that's that's not a valid question. Which blood type has the weakened immune system? N none. There's no there's no blood type that determines how strong or weak your immune system is. Every blood type is great for that person. So I have A positive. Hi, sweetie. It's my dog. Um, I have A positive, um, and that blood type works for me. Um, I don't, I'm not any worse off than my mother who's O positive. Um, it's just the kind of blood that I have. Um, so, and it has really nothing to do with your immune system. Um, it really only matters when you're receiving, when you're getting blood, if you need it. Oh, right. Um, okay. The diff, okay. Referring to blood types is, oh, in general, the universal donor, or is it specific type of blood? Oh, positive or negative. It has to be O negative because O positive can't be the universal donor. Because remember, you can't get what you don't already have. So O positive is anybody with a negative RH factor can't get O positive blood because it has the protein. And um, if I had negative blood, I couldn't get any positive blood. Even so say I was A negative, I couldn't get A positive blood because I would get the A antigens, but I'd also get the protein and that would be bad. Uh, what is the difference between the larynx and the pharynx? Well, the larynx is your voice box. Um, remember larynx, laryngeus, laryngitis. So your laryngeus is fancy for vocal cords, and you've probably all heard of laryngitis. And laryngitis is when your vocal cords get uh, swollen because itis means swelling of. Um, and... Um, uh, so just that's how that's how I remember the difference between the larynx and the pharynx. So larynx is your voice box and the pharynx is your throat. So uh, we'll talk about when we get to the digestive system that and you'll be asked like what structure uh, is uh, in both the digestive system and the respiratory system. And it's the pharynx because when you eat or you drink, it goes into your throat. And when you breathe, it goes into your throat. But eventually it splits. Um, because of the trachea and the esophagus. Uh, how much plasma is in the blood? It's about 40%. Um, plasma is made up. Um, hang on. Uh, plasma is 90% water, but, uh, okay, 55%. 55% is plasma. So more than half of your blood is plasma. And plasma itself is 90% uh, water. Uh, let's see. Do we need to know the other names for blood types like leukocytes? Good question. No, you don't. No. Um, I'm always going to share more with you than you need to know. Um, but remember, if it's not on the review, it's not on the test. So no, you don't need to know uh, erythrocytes, leukocytes, all that stuff. Um, ma. Okay, I'm caught up. So um, I would say, uh, just for your information there, are not that many integumentary system questions, um, but also there's not that much integumentary system info, if that makes sense, you know, like on the review, which I don't have in front of me, but on the review, it says the three layers of the skin, uh, the function of the integumentary system, what are the parts of the integumentary system? You need to know all that. Um, but that's it. Um, so I would say the integumentary system has the least uh, amount of, definitely has the least amount of information and circulatory has the most. Now, that being said, circulatory also has the most information, right? So with the circulatory system, we had to talk about the circulatory system itself. So what are the parts of the circulatory system? And then um, blood vessels, which 
are very specialized within the circulatory system and then blood, which is also in the circulatory system. So it makes sense that that would have the most number of questions. So uh, circulatory, then nervous, then respiratory, then integumentary. But like I said, that makes sense because it's, um, you know, if you look at your notes and the amount of information, there's definitely more information about the circulatory system than anything else. Um, let's see. Is the epiglottis the thing that makes sure the food doesn't go into your lungs? Yep, that's exactly what it is. So it covers the trachea uh, when you eat. Uh, remember, when I, I talk to my classes about this, when um, you talk with your mouth full, other than it being disgusting, um, in order to talk, you have to breathe. So um, it might not feel like you're taking a breath, but air has to cross your laryngeas, which means your epiglottis has to open. If your epiglottis is open, food can get into your lungs, which is why people choke um, oftentimes when they're eating. So um, you have, that's that's why, and you know, other like I said, other than it being gross, um, it, uh, you shouldn't eat when you're talking or talk when you're eating or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, it's right at the top of the trachea. Let's see. Parts of the brain. Do we need to know things like the frontal lobe? No. Uh, we do not need, to, you don't need to know the lobes. Uh, lobes are in the cerebrum, but we didn't study the lobes. You need, no, you do need to know. Uh, the left and right hemisphere, so that the left controls the right, right controls the left. Um, and the brain stem is medulla oblongata. We don't call it the brain stem. Um, and it is uh, controls uh, involuntary um, actions like breathing, heart rate, digestion, things like that. Are capillaries tubes like arteries and veins, or are they circular or something? No, they're tubes. They're just tiny, tiny, tiny tubes. Um, and um, they, oh, good answer here. So uh, capillaries, basically tiny tubes that can carry both types of blood. Oh, oxygenated, unoxygenated, okay. It's so tiny that blood cells have to line up and it's one cell thick, good. So it's one, the diameter is one cell. Um, and the walls are uh, very, very thin, and that's why they are suited for oxygen um, diffusion and carbon dioxide, gas diffusion, I guess. Um, but um, the walls of the uh, veins are, much, are thicker, and then the walls of the arteries are much thicker. Uh, and they have to be because they have to withstand um, the pressure from the heart pumping. Um, if there were capillaries coming off of the, the heart, the pressure that the heart's that the heart puts on that um, on the capillaries or you know on the blood would burst the capillaries. So that would be bad. Um, okay, so what was the reason? Okay, I just explained that. Both types of blood I mean, yeah, I knew that. What does the left and right hemisphere control? Uh well, the left controls the right side of your body and the right controls the left side of your body. And we talked about how the left tends to control more logical processes um, and the right more creative. Uh, so wh then where do capillaries take blood? Well, they don't take blood very far because what happens is arteries come. Uh, yeah, it, it says here, do they just connect? into the veins or arteries, right? So the artery takes blood from the heart and then goes into the capillaries where diffusion takes place at the body cells. Hang on, it's my daughter, Megan. Hey, Megs. I'm doing a live stream. So uh, yeah, they can't hear you, but they see me talking on the phone. Are you coming home from school? <laughs> No, talk, sweetheart. Got all these people watching me talk to you. Okay, quickly. Okay, how was school? Good, awesome. Uh, 
Okay. Did you talk to her about your other grade? No. Okay. Good. Uh, okay. Okay. I Oh, okay. Tricky. Okay. All right. Well, have fun and keep me posted, okay? Okay. I love you. Bye. Uh, well, at least you guys didn't have to watch me make dinner because a couple years ago, I uh, I just popped my iPad on the counter and I made I made dinner while I was doing a live stream. Okay. Yes. So capillaries are at all the body cells because that so if you figure arteries aren't able to diffuse gases right but that's how the oxygen gets to the body cells so there has to be a way for arteries to drop off the blood the only way to drop off the blood is for them to pass it off to something that can and that thing are capillaries so the capillaries um uh, so arteries go to capillaries, capillaries drop off oxygen, pick up carbon dioxide, and then the capillaries connect to veins, which takes the blood back to the heart. So it goes artery, capillary, vein, uh, heart. Okay. And remember, arteries carry blood away from the heart, veins carry blood to the heart. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I'm confused about the difference between bronchi and bronchiole. So bronchi is, uh, it goes trachea, bronchi, bronchioles. So um, bronchioles are small bronchi. Uh, so trachea is the biggest tube, and then it breaks to two bronchi, and then bronchioles are like the trees in the lungs, and then the alveoli are at the end of those branches. Uh, whoever asked, can we use our journals on the test? No. Oh, you're talking about journals on the test. Psh. All right. Uh, are neurons part of nerves? <laughs> you know, I don't know if it's confusing because neurons have a special name and they're not called nerve cells, but it's kind of like asking our Skin cells part of skin. So remember, a bunch of skin cells together make skin tissue. And all that tissue together makes skin. So neurons together make nerves. It, it's like, I, I hopefully you understand what I mean by that. Like, because neurons have, they have a special name. I think it's confusing because they're not just called nerve cells. Um, but um, Neurons, yeah, neurons make nerves. Um, let's see. Uh, does blood only carry oxygen and nutrients? Do they carry anything else? It carries everything. The only way for your body to um, get the nutrients that it needs, whether it's uh, minerals, uh, nutrients that it's picked up during digestion. And when we talk about the digestive system, we'll talk about how your small intestine, which is the most uh, where chemical digestion takes place, which is where that, you know, your glucose and all those things, carbohydrates, proteins cross into the blood. Um, they're wrapped in capillaries. So that's, that's how it moves around is in the blood. That's the only way your body can get what it needs is blood. So your blood carries everything, all the good stuff and all the bad stuff, which is why when you get tested for drugs or alcohol, the most uh, reliable way is to check your blood. Um, so you can check for caffeine, um, sugar. Uh, when you're taking a blood test for uh, diabetes, when, when uh, diabetics are testing their blood to see their insulin level, they have to take a little pinprick of blood. Um, so it's become more sophisticated, but um, that's the only way to test their insulin levels, which is what is made by the pancreas. And we'll talk about that in uh, 
endocrine and digestion too, but um, that's the only way to check it um, is in the blood. So your blood carries everything, hormones, uh, everything, everything, everything. All right. Does the blood only carry oxygen? Do axons include axon terminals and the myelin sheath? So um, I guess axons technically do con uh, include the axon terminal. Uh, the axon terminal like you is, is just that end where that kind of splits out like the roots of a tree. But some axons have a myelin sheath and some don't. So remember myelin sheath speeds up processing speed speeds up processing. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Or speeds up the, how quickly messages are delivered. Um, the thicker the myelin sheath, the faster it goes. It's like an insulator. So that was part of that nervous system um, lab that some of you did well on and some of you not so much. Um, so, but not all axons have a myelin sheath. So you may have heard of uh, gray matter um, and white matter. And that describes different um, parts of your brain and different nerves. Uh, white matter has the myelin sheath, gray matter doesn't. Um, and white matter typically can repair itself because it has that myelin sheath, gray matter can't. Sadly, our spinal cord, uh, our nerves in our spinal cord are made of gray matter. So that's why they can't repair themselves. Um, okay, la la. Spinal cord is composed of vertebrae, whoops. Neuron, spinal fluid, and there's a disc-like things. Okay, the spinal cord itself is a bundle of, of nerves. So if you remember when I showed you my pool noodle spinal cord, um, and it had, I'm gonna just draw it here. Hopefully my dog won't start barking. What do you see out there? I'm just drawing, <laughs> in case you're wondering what I'm doing. Okay, so I have that pool noodle spinal cord. Um, <laughs> so this would be the dark lines that are running vertically. This is the spinal cord, okay? All right, and it runs in between these vertebrae that if you turn them like this, so right now you're seeing them like this. If you turned it like this, it would kind of look, it would look like that and has a hole in it. And the spinal cord runs through it. And the spinal cord is a bunch of nerves. It's like rope, which is why I used rope in that model that's tightly wound all together, okay? And then coming off between the vertebrae are these nerves and they're going to all different parts of your body. So let's say your head's up here and your feet are down here. Obviously these nerves would go maybe to your arms. You know, the further down you get, you have your sciatic nerve that goes down kind of into your butt and your legs. And um, um, a lot of people struggle with, it's called sciatica, uh, where if you have pressure on the nerves, then you have numbness and pain. Um, so. Let me just draw this again. So this is vertebrae, and these are nerves. And then this thick part is the spinal cord. So yes, the, your, your spinal, your column or your vertebrae, your back is made of all of those things. Um, but so you have the vertebrae here, and remember it looks like that if you tip it. Uh, and then you have your spinal cord coming off of that our nerves that go to all different parts of your body. And in between, if you recall on my fun little model, I had rubber bands. And those rubber bands are discs that keep the uh, vertebrae from pinching all the way down because you want them to be sitting on like padding, okay? So I colored the padding. So you want your vertebrae to do that, okay? So that they're not, uh, pinching on any of the nerves that are coming out. If they squish together, then they pinch those nerves and you get, you're in a lot of pain. People who have a herniated disc, that means the disc is moved and now some nerves are getting pinched um, and it can be very painful. There's also uh, spinal fluid, uh, like uh, Zane had said, um, 
that also serves as protection. So um, that that um, that uh, like I said, that um, spinal fluid, the 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 spinal cord kind of floats around in there. It's just additional padding. Hi, honey. Hi. Um, Okay, let's see. Why is the spinal cord called the highway? Well, think about it. If the spinal cord is um, all of the nerves kind of wrapped up tightly together, it's the highway because you you have nerves that run from you know your back to your feet. Hey, thank you. Um, so it's where everything is connected. So if you are, remember we talked about reflexes and how reflexes are um, quick responses to something. So in that reading that you did for the nervous system, you like your foot was ready to step on a nail and then a message was sent to your interneuron in the, your lower back so that you could very quickly lift your foot up. But if it had to travel all the way to your brain, your foot might have put all of its pressure down on the nail and it's too late. So um, but that eventually it tells your brain what you did, but not right away. So it's called the highway because it it goes all the way up to your um, up to your brain. <sighs> all right. Hang on. I'm going back to look for questions. One, okay, Carrie's messages. Okay, you guys are answering for each other. I love it. Is the only purpose of the spinal cord to connect the nerves in the brain? Yeah, but that's pretty important <laughs> um, because the brain decides what to do. So if you didn't have nerves running to different parts of your body, then your body wouldn't work. All right. Um, what type of neurons don't have myelin sheath? Those are That's called gray matter. That's what it's called, gray matter. The spine helps your upright posture. Well, your, verte your, your vertebrae do, not your spinal cord. So spine, it's kind of, it's used too uh, loosely. Um, I guess you could say your spine, and that incorporates all of those things, but your spinal cord is that bundle of nerves in the middle. Uh, CNS is in the spine, and the PNS is in the nerves going to your limbs. Well, central nervous system, think of center, your brain and your spinal cord. That's it, brain and spinal cord. Look, think of right in the middle. And then your peripheral nervous system are all the nerves going off of it. So remember, there's only, there's three parts to the nervous system, brain, spinal cord, nerves, and your central nervous system, again, is in the center if you're, as you're looking at someone. So that's brain and spinal cord. And then peripheral, remember you, when you have a peripheral vision, you can look off to the side. That's all the nerves that go off to the side. Okay, what does the test review mean when it says list the structure of each of the following? So the word structure means how is it made? So um, it's a little easier in something that's really involved, like it's what is the structure of the heart? Then you would say there's four chambers, there's, um, you know, there are valves inside of it. Um, um, remember valves control blood flow so that blood only goes in one direction. Remember I, I talked about going to like a game or a, a stadium of some sort and you walk through a turnstile, but you can't like back up. That's how valves work. It only allows things to go one way. Um, but when it asks the structure of the pharynx, um, that's harder. I would, I would say it's in the, you know, the back of the mouth and throat. I would talk more about where it is because it would be hard to give the structure. Trachea, you could say it's covered in cartilage to make it strong. Remember, you can feel here and, um, and but it's, um, and then function is, is what it does. So what's its job? So on that vocabulary sheet that you guys have, one of the words is physiology. And I told you anatomy and physiology is the same as structure and function. So the words, the word anatomy and structure are synonyms, and the word function and physiology are symptoms. Synonyms. Um, okay, let's see. I wanna make sure I didn't, okay, I answered that. 
All right, out of curiosity, what does the diaphragm do? Well, that, that shouldn't be out of curiosity. Um, so I, I talked about this already, but I know it contracts and expands, but what does it do exactly? So again, I want you to think about the lung model. Let me see if I can get a picture of one. Um, uh, okay. Guys, bear with me here a second. Uh, okay. So, yeah, I can't split screen on this because I didn't get the other part to work. So when... Mm, when the... When you inhale... All right, hang on one second. I'm trying to look for a good picture and then I'll... I'll uh, put it on my iPad and then you can see it. Okay. So when, you're, when your diaphragm contracts, if you think about the lung model, okay, when it contracts, it actually moves down. All right. So I don't even have a thing. Oh, I'll do one of my lovely drawings. So here's the... I can't show this because it just looks bizarre. Well, that's not bad. Okay. So. Huh. Okay. That's not bad. Okay. So here's your diaphragm. Okay. When the diaphragm relaxes. It moves up. Okay. So if you remember the lung model, uh, when I pushed up on the bottom balloon, it forced the lungs to contract or to collapse, okay? That's because we're making the chest cavity smaller, which increases the pressure inside the chest cavity, and it forces the lungs to collapse, all right? When it, um, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, when it relaxes, okay. And then when it contracts, it moves down. So relaxes is up and contracts is down. So when the diaphragm moves down, okay, it increases the size of the chest cavity, which allows the lungs to inflate. So the diaphragm does not push on the lungs and squeeze the air out and then pull on the lungs and inflate them. That's not what it does. It increases and decreases the pressure inside your chest. Increased pressure forces the lungs to deflate. Uh, in, uh, decreased pressure allows the lungs to inflate. Uh, I'm confused on what the trachea is. Oh. Uh, and my husband is seltzering his water in case you hear that sound it's really loud all right so uh so this is my lovely mouth oxygen goes in and goes into your what they we call wind pipe um it but it's called the trachea but immediately when you breathe in, it goes into your trachea. So that's, and if you feel right here, you can feel it. And it has cartilage on it, cartilage rings to protect it because cartilage makes it a little stronger. Your esophagus is behind it. Um, so you have the cartilage rings there so that um, it won't, if you get hit or whatever, hopefully it won't puncture or break. But your trachea literally connects the mouth to the lungs. Uh, and it's an airway. It's how the air gets to your lungs. That's its job. <coughs> okay, so are the three parts of the skin, hair, hair, three parts of the skin, the hair, skin, and nails? No, three parts of the integumentary system are hair, skin, and nails, not three parts of the skin. 
That'd be kind of gross if we had hair. Well, I guess you have hair on your skin, but I have nails on my skin. All right. Uh, three parts of the nervous system. Brain, spinal cord, and nerves. That's it. Not brain, spinal cord, and neurons. No, no, no. Um, it's nerves because, remember, neurons are nerve cells, okay? Nerve cells make your brain. So you can't say brain, spinal cord, and neurons because that would be like saying brain, brain, spinal cord, spinal cord, neurons, you know, because neurons make up the spinal cord also. So if we're saying there are three separate parts, you have to say nerves. So in the brain, all these neurons come together to make the brain. In the spinal cord, all the neurons come together to make the spinal cord. And in the nerves, all the neurons come together to make nerves. Those are three different things. Um, so make sure that you know that it's not brain, spinal cord, and neurons. It's brain, spinal cord, and nerves. All right? That's really important. Um, I think I'm caught up on chat questions. Uh, um, so let's see. Let me take a look at the test again. Make sure I tell you everything you need to know. Excuse me. Oh, okay. Come on, it's a little slow. Oh, what am I doing? This is faster. Okay. What's it doing? Ah, there we go. Okay. So, do we need to know about types of circulation? No. No. Um, what system do we cover next? Uh, muscular. Is there a difference between the superior and inferior vena cava besides ones on the top and ones on the bottom? Nope. Nope, not at all. They're the same. It's actually the same vein that um, just part of it, it's, it's leading to the heart. And then it kind of splits and goes down into the heart like that. So it's actually considered the same structure. It just has a top and a bottom. So it's the same same thing, top and bottom. All right, let me look at the test. So you need to know, um, you know, what does your body do um, when you need more oxygen, you know, when you're exercising? Um, Let's see, you need to know the function of the systems. Uh, like I said, you, there'll be a diagram, but you won't be uh, filling in the diagram. You'll It'll say, like, uh, which of these is the lungs, A, B, C, or D? And then you, you know, pick whatever the right letter is. Uh, you'll need to know parts of the blood. Um... Just reading this. <coughs> You'll need to know gases, what gas is carried into the body and what which one leaves. Uh, the structure of the heart, we talked about that. Uh, the difference between arteries, veins, and capillaries. You'll have to know the order that the heart flows through the, um, the blood flows through the heart. You'll have to know blood types. Uh, you have to know what the different neurons do. Don't forget there's three types of neurons. There's a sensory neuron, motor neuron, and interneuron. You need to know those. Parts of a neuron, the order that a neuron impulse travels. Remember, the axon always carries the message away from the axon um, or away from the cell body, just like arteries carry blood away from the heart. Um, Axons carry messages away from the cell body. Um, you need to know what the um, epidermis is made of. 
uh, three types of skin. So that's <laughs> just reading someone's joke. Uh, okay, muscular system is what you Is there a difference between? No, I already read that. Uh, that's okay. The cringy joke, that's a good thing. Difference between the different types of blood. Um, no. Um, because you should have been there for that lesson, Rohan S. Um, the, and the information's on Schoology. So, um, if you're not sure, I mean, the different types of blood are determined by the antigens or the markers that are on the red blood cells. Um, so um, A, type A blood has A antigens and B antibodies. And that's just, you know, you're going to have to look at that, that um, foldable that you were supposed to do for blood types. It was very specific. If you don't remember it, I suggest you, um, yeah, I suggest that you um, look at the tutorial that's in Schoology um, that you were supposed to use to help you make that foldable. Um, and it's an actual to, uh, video that I made a couple of years ago. Um, and in the Schoology packet, I know there's a lot of things on Schoology about the circulatory system, but um, just, you know, if you take a minute to go over it, you shouldn't have any problem. Uh, what, do you, the, uh, what do you mean about the different parts of the epidermis? Not the different parts of it, but we did talk about kind of what um, you read an article about skin and what, like, what your epidermis is made of, like, what is on that outer layer. Who remembers? Can somebody chat in what the epidermis is made of? Um, oh, wait. What layer of skin are the capillaries in? Well, that doesn't matter. They're in all the layers, really, because it's they're deep when they, they, uh, they're up by the surface because if you uh, cut yourself, just like a paper cut, you're cutting capillaries. If you get a bruise, you're, you're breaking capillaries. The capillaries also surround your liver. That's pretty deep inside you. So um, um, the epidermis is made of dead cells. It's all the dead uh, cells moving to the top. So, um, your epidermis is made of dead cells, which is why your mattress needs to be replaced every, I don't know, eight years or something because it like quadruples in weight because of all the dead skin cells in it. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's disgusting. Um, um, so yeah, it's just made of dead, it's just dead, dead cells. So, which is why it doesn't hurt you you know, if you have dry skin and you rub your arm and skin falls off, it's, that's just, it's just your, you know, your skin. Um, so, uh, we'll do, we'll be on for like another two minutes and then I'm going to sign off. So what is the myelin sheath? Uh, the myelin sheath is an insulator that, um, <laughs> sorry, Zane. Uh, uh, it's an insulator that, um, is around the axon uh, of many nerve cells, but not all. Uh, and it speeds, it protects it. Um, it helps in healing if for something, if something happens to the nerve. Uh, and it um, speeds up uh, your processing speed. So when uh, a message is sent um, down an axon that has a myelin sheath, it goes way faster. Um, Yep, Elise, the myelin sheath is wrapping around the axon that makes the impulses go faster. It's important to remember, though, that not all axons have a myelin sheath. So uh, let me, versus gray matter. Okay. No, I don't want pictures. All right, the central nervous system has two kinds of tissue, gray matter and white matter. Gray matter, which has a pinkish gray color in the living brain, contains the cell bodies, dendrites, and axon terminals of neurons. So it's where all the synapses are. White matter is made of axons connecting different parts of gray matter to each other. Okay, that was confusing. 
Hang on. There we go. This is better. Okay. Um, it's a pretty simple one. Uh, so it says, but man, there's like 10 paragraphs after it. Okay. Why matter of your brain and spinal cord is composed of bundles of neurons, of axons. These axons are coated with myelin, a mixture of proteins and lipids that help conduct nerve signals and protect the axons. White matter's job is to conduct, process, and send nerve signals up and down the spinal cord. Damage to the white matter of your brain or spinal cord can affect your ability to move, use your sensory faculties, or react appropriately to external stimuli. Some people with damaged white matter suffer deficits in reflexive reactions. Um, gray matter uh, is found in the cerebellum, cerebrum, and medulla oblongata. It says brainstem. We don't call it that. Uh, hang on. Uh, and it does not, it does not have that myelin sheath, which is why it's called gray matter because the myelin actually has like a, a whitish color to it. And it's, it looks like white instead of gray. <laughs> Go figure. Um, okay. So what are neurotransmitters? So we talked about that, but neurotransmitters are chemicals that allow messages to jump the synapse. So when, you know, the message has to get from one neuron to the next, um, it has to get across that, has to get across that space. And how it does that is through a neurotransmitter. There's all kinds of neurotransmitters. You don't need to know them. Um, you just need to know that um, there's lots of different ones. <coughs> is the soma the nucleus of the neurons? No, the soma is the cell body. The whole cell body is called the soma, and then the nucleus is the nucleus. But um, the soma is fancy for the cell body. <sighs> oh, good. Wow. And see, I just said exactly what I just said. Okay. All right. So. It's time for me to sign off. Uh, like I said, don't forget to, uh, if you haven't already, um, send your um, completed reviews to your teacher, and she will give you the code to uh, for the, sorry, to open the PDF um, with the answers to the review. Um, it doesn't help for you to bug a friend that's already gotten the, uh, code because that doesn't help you. We don't. I don't do a review, or none of us do a review, just so that we can have one more thing to grade. Um, it is. It is so that no, and see, I'm not telling you. Um, it's to force you to study. And if sometimes the only way we can get you to study is to work, is to do the review, then so be it. But um, we really just want you to do well. I promise you. At no point are your teachers saying, like, oh, let's come up with a question they'll never be able to answer. Um, we want you to do well. So uh, you've got to do the review. you got to do the work. Um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Sorry. So uh, I will um, be checking my email periodically. But if you send it to me and a half an hour later you haven't gotten the code, take a breath because I might be having dinner. Or something. I don't know. I still have my work clothes on. So um, um, study and uh, get some sleep. And don't worry about it because you guys get all worked up over these t these tests. And as long as you study, you're going to get under it. So have a good night. And um, I'll see you in the a.m.